OpenArt recently added an AI image generation model called OpenArt Photo Realistic, and it seems like a good time to try out that model and several others and see how they do at generating photorealistic images. We'll focus mostly on things that look like snapshots or selfies from a camera roll, or maybe something like an old picture from a photo album. For each run, I used the same prompt with four different models, generated two images each, picked the one that looked the best out of those two, and that's what I have for us to look at here. OpenArt, who's sponsoring this video, has teamed up with Minimax, the maker of the Hilu video models, for Story Weeks, an event offering some deals like free video generation credits to use Hilu on OpenArt, and some creative contests with prizes including cash and subscriptions to OpenArt and Minimax. Story Weeks runs from August 25th through September 7th. There's a link in the description that'll take you over to open art where you can get all the details on the promotions and the contests. For this 80s generational photo, Flux gave it a nice yellow flavor that makes it seem old and got the scene and the elements right. I'm not sure the hairstyles really scream 80s, but it's not bad. Open art's grandma definitely exudes 1980s, not so sure about the other subjects or the car in the background. Imogen brought the 80s vibe through the mom's hair and glasses. There's a bit of a yellow tinge to the photo, but it kind of looks more like a golden hour shot more than vintage yellowing. Quinn gets a few points for having the mom and kid look one way while grandma looks the other. That seems authentic, but it's awfully fuzzy, especially around mom's hair. Here are those images side by side. They've each got their own style and something to like, but I think they would all be usable. Flux Context did a great job with the subjects in this selfie. The only thing that bothers me is the extra light fixture in the window. OpenArt did great with the subjects too. I like how it and Flux put the green reflection on the eyeglasses. But something about this one, I can almost see the movement like they were just getting posed when she snapped the image, and I think that adds to the realism. The ladies in the Image N4 image look a little less happy to be there, but I think it's still a believable selfie. The Quinn image just doesn't look right to me. The subjects are fuzzy, their faces seem too bright for the image, and since we can see the camera in the girl's hand on the left, it isn't really a selfie, but a picture taken by someone else of the people taking the selfie. Looking at them all together, I'd focus on the two on the left. Context has a nice vibe, but they have shiny skin, which is a flux thing. Open art doesn't have that shiny skin thing going on, but it also has less in the way of shadows. Flux Context made an adorable image of this puppy napping on the couch. To me, it feels a little soft for photorealistic, but it isn't awful. Lots of buttons on that remote control, though. Open Art has a much older puppy, and he's not curled up like a croissant, but it looks more realistic, like a snapshot, which is what I was going for. Image N4 also has an adorable pup. It's a great looking image, but the blurred background and the lighting and shadows make it look less like a candid amateur shot than what I wanted. Instead of having our pup curled up like a croissant, Quinn just put the croissant next to the puppy, and that just kind of ruins it for me. They're all adorable, even though none of them have the pup's nose tucked under his paw. It seems like we're seeing context go with lower light, open art goes bright, Imogen's somewhere in the middle, and Quinn just does weird things. In her mug shot here, Granny's supposed to be winking. Flux just gave her some weird eyes, but it got the overall scene and elements, including the text. Open art has Granny winking, but not really selling the wild grandma vibe. It got the text that was specified in the prompt, but it also added a line of text too. I think this bright, kind of overexposed look works well for a mugshot. Not that I have any of my own mugshots to compare it to. Image N4 has something weird going on with Granny's eye, but it doesn't look like a wink. And the overall style of this one feels more like a stock photo or a professional studio portrait than an authentic mugshot. Quinn's grandma shows some personality, like you don't know if she's sweet, crazy, or a good mix of both. And it got the text right. Pretty noticeable differences in the style and expressions in this batch. I like the open art style, but Granny's expression from the Quinn version. Flux Context has this woman sitting on a wall, which is what we're going for, but it seems like it's just a little too polished for the look I wanted. When this image popped up from OpenArt, I stopped and took a double take because it feels like a picture I've seen in someone's photo album at some point in my lifetime. So that makes it automatically pass the realistic snapshot test for me. Imogen did better at sticking to a block wall, like it said in the prompt, and the image is good, it just doesn't grab me. And then Quinn. It's really fuzzy, and it doesn't just look like a depth of field blur. It looks fuzzy, and I don't know why our subject looks so miserable. So again, Flux goes a little more dark and polished. Open art photo realistic is a little on the brighter side. Imogen stays sort of neutral, and Quinn goes fuzzy and weird. I like the expression of this guy on the subway from Flux, and it didn't overshine his skin. Something feels off about the subway car, but it's not immediately obvious to me what that might be. 
Now this guy's expression from the open art image, it's telling a story. I don't know what the story is exactly, but he's saying something about something he's showing us on the train or maybe a response to a text asking him a dumb question. Imogen's version just doesn't work. Aside from the flat facial expression, the seat he's on doesn't make any sense. It goes all the way across the subway car, but above it's open to more subway car behind him. Quinn did okay with the subject and a plausible subway car, but it looks like motion blur on this woman in the background yeah, but she's standing still. Flux and Open Art had the best facial expressions and they didn't mess up the scene with a weird blur or a seat that doesn't exist on the subway. Now let's jump into Open Art and generate some images so you can see how it works. From the Open Art homepage over on the left menu, just click Image. That brings us to the Image Creation page. First up, select a model by default. It's on Flux Context, but if we click there, we've got a bunch of models on Open Art to choose from. Let's pick the Open Art Photo Realistic model. It's updated that here on our Image Generation page. Now we need to give it a prompt. I'm gonna say an elderly man with glasses and a flat cap reads a newspaper at a small cafe table on a sunny sidewalk. That's a fairly simple prompt. We've got some options in here to make it more detailed. We'll come back to that in a minute. Our next option is image guidance. If we wanted to use a reference image to have the AI sort of look at and create this image from as a reference, we would add it in here and set our creativity level. We're not doing that, so we'll close that up and come down and pick an output size. Most of my examples today were either square or I think I had a couple 9 by 16, so let's switch it up and we'll do widescreen 16 by 9 for this one. Down at the bottom, choose the number of images you want to generate with this prompt and these settings. We'll leave it on two and click create. And that took about 30 seconds for it to generate two images. Take a look at our first one. Looks like it got everything that we asked for in the prompt. We got the older guy, the newspaper, the flat cap. Now it looks like his feet might be pointing the wrong direction. Not sure about that. Let's check out the next image. Again, it looks like it got what we asked for. The old man, the newspaper, the cafe, the table, sunny day. Now the text in the newspaper is gibberish and that's pretty common with any of the image generation models unless you specifically tell it what kind of text you want, what you want it to say and where. Let's come back here to our create settings. In the prompt box, let's toggle on auto enhance. And what'll happen there is after we click the create button, the robots will take this prompt and add a whole bunch of detail to it. The only drawback is you don't have an opportunity to see and edit that prompt before it generates the images. On the other hand, sometimes seeing it once it generates is a lot easier than trying to read through the prompt and figure out what you like and don't like. Come down here and click create. And right here are the two images using the auto enhance prompt. These images tend to be a lot richer and have a lot more detail because more detail was provided in the prompt. And to see what it wrote, the enhance prompt, just come over here on the right, underneath the prompt, you'll see Enhanced Prompt, and then come down and click the Show More button. Now you can see the full prompt that it generated from your initial prompt to create this image. If you like a lot of what it did, but you wanna make changes, you can click this Copy Prompt button right here, then you can go back and paste it here in the prompt box and make whatever changes you want and then create again. Now, if you're putting an already enhanced prompt, a detailed prompt in here, you will wanna go ahead and turn off this Auto Enhance toggle. Let's take a look at our second second image with the enhance prompt, and this will be the exact same enhance prompt that was used for the other variation of this image. Back up to the model selection, if we click switch, we can select one of the other models like Quinn. Our simple prompt is still in there and auto enhance is turned on. Now if we generate with auto enhance turned on again, it'll generate an entirely different enhanced prompt. You've got size options under Quinn as well, we'll go 16 by 9. Under the advanced settings, you have some things like a seed if you want to use a specific seed. The number of steps you want to go and whether you want to upscale the image after it's created. For that, I'd rather wait until I have an image I'm sure I like and want to use before I upscale it. We'll leave those advanced settings off and click create. While that's going, we'll come up and switch models again. Select image in four. Same thing, we'll leave the simple prompt, the auto enhance on. We'll switch the size to 16 by nine. Then for advanced settings, it's just an automatic upscale. We're going to leave that off and click create. We'll come back up to the model again. Click flux content. Text Pro, leave the auto enhance on. Now for image guidance with Flux Context, it has Omni Reference. You can provide it up to four images there, backgrounds, characters, items, and then describe in your prompt how those things are all related and should appear in your image. 
the aspect ratio is set on 16 by 9 and we don't need any of the advanced settings like the seed, the steps, or the upscaling, so we'll click create. Now I can already tell from these previews that every other image that's been generated from these three other models has been not photorealistic. Let's take a look at the first one from Quinn. Under enhanced prompt, if we show more and take a look through here, toward the end of the enhanced prompt, suggested style, dreamy watercolor illustration. For image N4, under the enhanced prompt, we'll say show more, and in this enhanced prompt, it does end with photorealistic style, but right before that, it says illustrated in a cozy photorealistic style. And I think that's why we got an illustration. The auto enhanced prompt here on the Flux context generation, if we come down to the bottom, render this scene in a cozy, inviting watercolor style, capturing the warmth of the moment. There's a few ways we can use these enhancers to get a more detailed prompt, but also keep our photorealistic style. The simplest is probably to just go into the prompt box and add something like a photograph of before the description of what you want in the image. The auto enhance will usually pick up on that and not turn it into a watercolor or an illustration or anything else. Another way that makes it at least more likely that you'll get the photorealistic result is click the drop down and instead of auto enhance, we'll come down to customize prompt. Here you can select something like photorealism or you can scroll down and pick one of these photography styles like food photography or fashion editorial or something that's more specific to what you want. And then enhance the prompt but keeping your color scheme and style in mind. And of course you can also click the drop down, choose quick enhance. Now you can see that detailed enhance prompt right here in your prompt box before you generate. So if you see it calling for a watercolor or pencil drawing or something you don't want, you can change it before you click the create button. Something great about open art is you can go from image to video without ever leaving open art. So we'll click on this image and right up top here we can click image to video or over on the right we can say use image and image to video. That brings us into the video generation page on the image to video tab with the image we selected as the reference. Select a model, just click this drop down. You've got a lot of models to choose from on OpenArt. We're going to click Minimax Hilu 02. You can give it a prompt or let the robots figure it out. We'll say a bird lands on the table and looks at the man as the camera arcs left. We'll skip over sound and speech settings. We can set the duration to 6 or 10 seconds and then we can choose an output resolution 512, 768 or 1080p. We'll just go with 760 and create. Our video is ready, let's take a look. All right, we got camera movement, the guy's looking up, the bird comes in, he lands, looks at the guy, they're both over it, and the day goes on. When it comes to pricing on open art, you've got some options, starting with the essential plan at $14 a month, or if you go annually, it's $7 a month, that's 4,000 credits a month. And if you're on the advanced plan for $14.50 a month, if you go annually, or the infinite plan, $28 a month, if you go annually, you can also add on extra credit packs at $15 a month for five. 5,000 more credits, or you can choose to add on a lot more credits every month. Hey, my name is Bob. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, and I hope you'll come back and see me in another video.